Hey, yo, Islanders. Good AI morning. Today, we're going to be combining the power of artificial intelligence and the Marvel Universe. Well, I hope you're all having just another wonderful day in paradise. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video as well as had a wonderful New Year's Eve. Now, what we're going to be doing today is going, you're going to be needing a little bit of a backstory on why I'm doing what I'm doing. And that is back in 2008, well, 2008, 2009, I got my very first iPod Touch. I literally saved up all my money from cutting grass and doing a whole boatload of other odd jobs just to be able to get this iPod Touch. Yes, I got Angry Birds, Fruit Ninjas, every got every single game you could possibly think of that, let me just adjust my mic, that you could possibly get on the iPod Touch at the time I got it on there. But what I also did was I bought the Iron Man movie and I had it installed on that iPod Touch. Now, this is right before I actually made a decision to start pursuing robotics and everything you all see me doing in, um, today. But I really had no idea what was robotics, what was artificial intelligence, and all that stuff. But when I first saw that movie, I was absolutely hooked. I was hooked on the Iron Man suit. I was hooked on the Jarvis. It actually inspired me so much that one of these days, and I will actually be able to retire once I do this, I want to make my own fully functional Iron Man suit. But anyways, that's what we're going to be trying to do today is we're actually going to be taking this data set that I web scraped off of the IMBD website to be able to predict the upcoming IMBD scores of Marvel Universe Phase 4, all right? Now, I did try doing Rotten Tomatoes, but I kind of got kicked out of the website when I was doing the web scraping, so that's why we're doing IMBD. Now, for those of you who are brand new to the Islander Intelligence community, my name is William McCann, and this community is all about making artificial intelligence accessible by using Python to learn applications of artificial intelligence through demonstration. So with all that being said, that's enough talk. Why don't we dive into this data set? So please sit back, relax with your favorite snack, and let's get started, shall we? All right, so before we can actually start making some predictions on what these upcoming Marvel movies could be for score-wise, the first thing we need to actually do is import a few different Python packages. For instance, the first one we're going to be importing is going to be Panda. So import pandas as pd as well as import numpy as mp and for our classification model we're going to be using from sklearn dot navbase import the gaussian nb and then of course we're going to be using our commutes python packages import ir data cleaning as ird as well as import islanders as ir now we're just going to run this one cell we're going to get a brand new cell in order to actually be able to access the data set that web scraped we're going to have to say movies equals ir dot data set within this data set we're going to say move movies oh movie now we're going to run that one cell and then we can see real quick what this data set looks like now it's made up of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different columns. And let's just do some, uh, let's just do some data analysis real quick on this. Uh, Movie.info. Let's see what we got going on in here. Now, score is a float. If we're going to be using a successful classification model, I actually, I'm probably going to be switching that to a object column. But we'll see. It may, I'm just going to keep it how it is. And if we have some issues later on while building the model, I'll come back and switch that. Now, runtime is an object column. I know that for a fact it's because we have 3H, 22M. What I want to do is actually convert this all into minutes. So we're going to be doing some funky stuff to be able to do that. Year is a column I really don't think we need in terms of like what, how, like being able to predict what the possible imbd score could be but we're going to be keeping a lot a lot of the other stuff i think probably another one well we're going to keep titles as well we're going to have to use the encoder for that and genre we're going to keep as well we're going to have to use the encoder we're going to have to use ir data cleans encoder python well python module as well director is going to be an encoded one too so why don't we start getting into this data clean shall we all right honors honestly real quick these beats fit pros are amazing i'm gonna have an upcoming video on them soon but i actually got my music playing on my phone right now so what i ended up doing actually while i had my headphones on was i came over to 
each well I came over to the runtime column and I actually converted that from that object type column into minutes so this is just a simple for loop that I created within these as well as I also dropped year but back to the runtime sorry I kind of just skipped over but back to the runtime I created a I created a list that was based off of all the values within movie runtime and then within this another cell, we create a brand new Python list that's empty. And then we create a for loop that was going to go through runtime, which was representing the runtime in our pandas data frame column runtime. Now within, we had two variables, hour and minutes. And I just used i.split to be able to split apart all the the object type values within that one column and then I multiply the hours times 60 to get it to minutes and then I added the minutes to the multiplied values of hours and then I appended those new values onto new run dot append then right here is just simply just calling upon the new run just double checking that all the values are correct and throughout this whole process I was going periodically through using a print statement to make sure that all the values coming out was proper and then once I was positive that new run is all set and ready to go, I made run the runtime column to be equal to the values we found for the new run. And then just to double check that all the changes were successful, I called movies.info. And as you can tell, runtime is now a in 64. Now the next thing we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be encoding those columns I was telling you about. So what I'm going to do is coded list we're going to say create a list of all these column names so it can make it a lot easier for us to actually plug and play for ir data cleanings encoder module and what we're going to say is rating genre and director those are the three right director genre and rating yeah title is going to get something completely different applied to it so Next thing we're going to have to do is call upon encoded equals IRD dot encoder. And within this, we're going to say data equals movies columns equals encoded list. Now, what we have to do in order to tell the encoded Python module that we want these corrections made, what we're going to be doing, why are you going like that? You don't like something in here. Oh, it's not data, it's PD. PD equals that. No, it's not PD, it's DF. So we're gonna tell the encoded module to actually run those corrections by just saying uh, movies equals encoded, encoder, well, no, not, dot check. Run that line and this is just a simple stuff. You don't have to worry about this stuff. And now we can just check movies and it's gonna have a heck of a lot more columns, which is exactly what we want. Next thing we're going to be doing is actually getting rid of those duplicates I noticed when we're going over title. So what we're going to be doing, and this is the very first time I've ever actually dropped duplicates from a pandas data frame. So you're all going to be learning with me. Um, I do know how to do it. I just never used it. So we're gonna say, movies dot drop underscore duplicates and we're going to say in place where are you oh in place equals true run that one line and let's just see if this actually made got rid of those duplicates movies dot title dot value underscore counts Boom, boom. Let's check it out. No, it didn't. So I wonder, do we have to do uh, what I'm going to do now? Everyone is actually create a brand new data frame and see if I can say PD dot drop duplicates and see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to figure out how to use this one pandas method. So what we're going to say is just dropped DUP equals PD dot drop duplicates and I think this is actually the way you're supposed to do it movies in place equals true Alrighty, so give me all a second and I'm gonna figure out how to actually use this correctly all right now, so I figure out how to actually be able to use the drop duplicates pandas mod I don't know why I mix that word up 
I figured out how to use the drop duplicate method, and that is we have to specify the subset. The subset is really what's going to be the column that identifies where the duplicates are. In our case, it's going to be titles. So that's why within these brackets, we have title. And the next thing we have to do is we have to tell the drop duplicates which one to actually keep. In my, our circumstance, I'm going to tell the drop duplicates to actually keep the last one. And then we're going to say in place to make sure that all the changes that are being applied to this pandas data set is actually applied well it's actually kept when we go on to the next line and really when you don't do that i found out when you don't specify these two input arguments the subset as well as the keep it doesn't actually run it's just like calling nothing so once we have this we can now actually call upon we can actually do some natural language processing that's what nlp stands for so the t method that we're going to be using and there's several different types of method is going to be the tfdif and that's from well, sklearn.featureextraction.text import tf, what is it? Oh, not import tf dif vectorizer. The next thing we're going to want to do is actually create an instance of tf dif vectorizer and tf dif vectorizer. We're gonna do that and then what we're going to be oh oh I need to add something real quick command C copy this real quick and then what we're going to be then doing is now actually making those corrections we don't want to actually be passing in the whole pandas data frame because what it's going to do is be splitting apart each individual string looking at what are the values within those strings and it's going to take out certain words that are just like kind of nothing and then there's going to be certain words that really stand out. But we don't want to be passing in the whole pandas data frame. We just want to pass in a co one column at a time. So we're going to say uh, new drop equals tfdif dot fit transform. And we're going to be passing in movies at title. All right. And the next thing we want to do, because right now, it's essentially not really, if we were to run this just right now, let me just show you all, new drop, it's just gonna come up like that, a sparse row format. So what we have to do in order to convert that sparse row into something we can read, it's gonna actually be converted into a NumPy array. We're gonna say dot to array, run that line, and as you'll see, it's a really big, pan, well, it's a really big NumPy array. And the reason why I know it's a NumPy array is because we can just do type, new drop right it's going to be a numpy.nd array now in order to be able to get all the vocabulary that is being used inside of this tfdi vectorizer what we're going to want to do is just say tfdif dot vocabulary and it's going to give us all the words so the next thing we're going to want to do now is actually take this numpy array and add it on to the old data set so what we're going to actually do is just say new movie equals pd dot concatenate and we're going to pass in movies as well as pd dot data frame and then we're going to also be passing in at this point the numpy array which is going to be new drop well data equal equals new drop comma columns equals tf dif dot vocabulary once we run this we can see what the new pandas data frame looks like new movies is going to be that and we're going to be seeing that title is still applied so what we could have done actually is movies dot drop columns equals title run that and now that column is now taken out. What I do want to do is we're going to be creating classes for our classification model, our Ga Gaussian NB. And what we're going to be doing in how we're going to apply those classification is we're going to actually be looking at the score. We're going to be splitting out from essentially from a score from nine to 10, um, eight to nine and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna take a couple of seconds, figure that all out and I'll pull you all back once I have something that's finalized, that'll be easier for me to explain to all of you. All right, yeah, there's so in the last section that we we're just going over with the TFDIF, I actually made one boo-boo and that is that I use PD concatenate. I use PD concatenate pretty often 
but when I'm using it as like essentially an append, I actually say axis equals one. But for some reason, when I did it, I forgot to say axis equals one. So it actually just sandwiched it together. And then the next thing that also happened is when I went back to correct that mistake and I said axis equals one, for some reason with how this data set's set up, pandas doesn't like that. So what I ended up having to go back into was just using pandas built in a pen a pen method by simply creating a brand new numpy array called nlp and what the nlp is filled with is all the values from the tfdif once we create that brand new pandas data frame we were therefore able to actually append those values straight onto the movies pandas data frame once we were able to do that we just drop title and that's just simply so that we don't have redundant values and it's going to give us a data set that looks just like what you see right here all right once we have that data set all set up and ready to go, now we can actually start making those categories. And what I ended up doing was just making some simple categories where between one and two, if the values were anywhere between that, it would be considered which category? This one right here. If it was less than or equal to one, then it would be considered part of this category. So on and so forth for all these individual categories. So essentially there should be about 10 categories. Well, yeah, 10 categories within this one data set. It's going to allow us to create a brand new column within our pandas data frame called new score and we're going to set that equal to new cat which is the python list we use to create all these that will append all these values to. Once we were able to do that we just want to double check that the score was well all the values of new score were successfully converted into object values or into those 10 individual categories. Once we do that, what we can now do is actually drop the old score. So we're just going to say movies dot drop columns equals score. And the reason why we're dropping score is because essentially it's just going to become a redundant value of this data set. Well, essentially, that's what we want to... We want to predict the values of new score, but if we have something that kind of gives it a hint to what the new score is going to be, then it's totally useless to have this data. Well, totally useless to have this model. So we're just going to erase that from this data set, allow us to have more reliable prediction. Now, once we do that, we can now start splitting our data up into the training set, well, up into the X values and the Y values. So we're going to say X equals... MP dot array movies dot I lot and we're gonna say to negative one. So that's specifying every single value within that row, and we want all the columns except for the last one. And we're gonna say dot values. Alright, now the next thing we're gonna say is y equals mp dot array movies I lock all the rows within the last column dot values and now we can run this one thing and i did forget to import one python package and that python package is from sklearn dot what it model selection import train test split this is going to allow us to actually be able to split up our data set into the training set and the test set so we're going to say x train x test y train y test equals train oh I keep wanting to do train test split and we're going to say x y test size equals 0 0.2 run that and now we can actually create our model so what we're going to do to create that model is just going to be uh let's say gnb equals gaussian nb nothing has to go within those parentheses and the next thing we're going to say is gnb dot gnb dot fit and we're going to pass in the values of x train and y train once we do that we can now get a score just to double check that everything's all set so gmb dot score x test y test let's see what we get 
45. Surprise! Yeah, boy! Oh, snap. You didn't know? That's really bad. Let's try messing around with this real quick. 36. Dang. So why don't we try using a decision tree for this one? So let's just say DT equals IR dot DT. We're going to pass in X, Y. No, we, want, we don't want DT. We want DEC. And we're going to say DT equals DEC dot Test and y test is going to equal DEC dot build and then test equals true. Pass that in and then what I what I'm going to be wanting to get is the DT dot score. This is probably going to take a sec, so let's fast forward. All right, so it's actually the next day, and what was going on, just a couple of seconds for all of you, was that I was trying to be figuring out how to get a more accurate model. What I ended up learning was that, A, don't be messing around with stuff when you're about to pass out at the computer, because I was super exhausted during that section, as well as the data set is going to, what I realized also is that you can't force the data set to be how you want it to be. A data set, um, in my opinion now, after going through all this, is more of a living thing. And what I mean by that is, let me switch over to the data spell. I tried every type of classification model I could possibly think of, and none of them came out with very good results. I tried the Gaussian NB like we tried at the beginning, our decision tree, Python method, our another type of native base. Actually, I used every type of native base that you could possibly think of. Well, they had the accessibility to be able to use with SK Learn at the time of this recording, as well as I tried the random for forest classifier. But what I ended up realizing after messing around with this, as well as getting a really good night's sleep, is that this this data set is not a classification data set, it is a regressor data set. And once I figured that out, I got a regression score of 0 0.52. So I ended up using decision tree regressor. It's much like the decision tree classifier, except it's it's built to actually design, well, it's built to output regressive models. I don't like using linear regressor or any like those type of regressing models. I like using decision tree or random forest regressors because it's a very adaptive regressor model. So what we want for a score is as close as possible to zero as we can get. And we got 0 0.0524. That is honestly a really good score. But what ended up happening, well, what ended up happening was two things in order to get this. I had to switch some stuff around. I couldn't actually use, where are you? I couldn't actually use our classification function that we created right here. And the reason being is because we're using a regressor model, not a classification model. So therefore, this had to go out the door and the old score had to stay in place. Now, another thing we had to do also, and I did this off camera to make it faster, is that I went up online, found the next Marvel movie, which is going to be the Morbius movie. Honestly, I'm really excited to see that. But that is the next movie that has all of the information needed to make an accurate prediction, which is the title of the video, the rating, the runtime, the year that's going to be presented, which is January 28, 2022. So make sure you put that in your calendar, as well as the director. All the other Marvel videos that are going to be part of Phase 4 don't have as much information as the Morbius movie does right now. So that is why what we're going to be doing is going all the way back up to the top to add the Morbius video into the main data set. So what I ended up doing is let me see if I can find where I added you is right here, I create a brand new Python dictionary where I filled it with all the information for Morbius, the title, the rating, the runtime, the genre, and the director, as well as I then turned it into a pandas data frame. Now, the reason why I'm going through all this effort to add it at the beginning is so that way it gets data cleaned the same exact way as the rest of the data. But what you'll end up noticing is that... When it comes to splitting up our data set into the training set as well as the testing set, 
what I ended up doing was excluding that one last column right here. All right. So X equals NP array movies, I lock all of the, all the rows except for the very last row. And then all the columns except for the very last column. And then the same thing for Y, except it's going to be all the rows of the last column, except for the very last row. So therefore what I ended up doing with the Morbius information that was excluded from the data set was I just put it into the predicted movie DF. And then also I had to reshape it to allow it to be looking like this because if we were to run it just like this let me just show you real quick um man see go like that and then we're just going to run this one line it's going to come out like that if we were to plug this into any machine learning or artificial intelligent model it would not like that format which is why we reshaped the data to look exactly like this right here now once i was able to do that i just put everything else regularly how i would normally do it with the train test split and then therefore allowing us to be able to get a prediction where our our regressor model, our decision tree regressor is going to predict that the IMBD score for Morbius is going to be at a 6.6. .6. All right, as you all heard it here first, our model is predicting that the Morbius movie will get a IMBD score of about 6.6. .6. Honestly, I think it'll be really exciting if that is actually what the IMBD score will be for the Morbius movie. Regardless, I cannot wait to see that movie. I'm a huge Marvel fan. And as well, let me know down in the comment section down below, what is your favorite Marvel hero? I cannot wait to see. For me, it is Iron Man, as you all can probably tell by the thumbnail. As well as if you want to learn more about artificial intelligence, go ahead and check out the videos popping up on the screen. Or if you want to get your hands on the PIP commands that we worked with in today's video, go ahead and check out the description bar down below where you'll also find the link to the notes for today's video. Don't forget to laugh. It really does help with the programmer's headache. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.